Hey, Sharon, thought a video would be maybe easier than uh, an email, but um, if you do a search for O'Reilly Auto Parts, uh, Google now uses satellite data imagery to tell when stores are busy. Uh, we High Acre store actually has really long business hours, 7.30 to 10 p.m. on most days. And this is the interesting part right here. So if you go to Saturdays, it shows how busy they are. So if, if the clerk told you that was their busiest day, if you compare Saturday to Sunday, Saturday is definitely busier. And then if you go back to Friday, it's actually uh, a lot lower. And if you if you scroll through the week, or let's just go through the week. We'll start at Sunday. Uh, shows that how busy they are, popular times. And Google is actually using satellite data based on cars in the parking lot. It shows that they're busy Sunday morning and then Sunday afternoon. And if you go to Monday, obviously they're not as busy during the day, but then they get really busy on late uh, Monday night, which you know people get after work or get off work and then uh, go get their auto parts, etc. So this is a super helpful tool on any location uh, we're looking at. So Tuesdays, you know, during the week, they're not super busy. They get busier on Thursday and then busier on Friday. And then Saturday is their busiest day, which matches what the clerk said. You know, so if you compare what time you were there yesterday, Friday, I'm not sure what time of the day you were there, but you could compare this gauge to uh, that gauge here. So that, that's number one. Uh, looking at you know, how busy a store is. And then number two, you know, I go back to the demographics I sent and you look at the location, you have 12,000 people, or actually using the 2018 data, you have 14,000 people in a five minute drive time from the property. It's growing at 2% a year, which is faster than the state, national, state and national average. And you look at the income distributions, here's that average household income that we're looking at, um, you know, some of those other locations we looked at, like the Dollar General had 41,000 uh, average household income, which is low. This is 61,000 and in 2023, it's projected to be 71,000. And then if you go down here further to the 10 minute drive time, there's actually 55,000 people, 10 minutes from the property. It's growing at two and a half percent a year and your average household incomes are still high. Uh, so that's, you know, gives you an idea of the local market. And then in terms of retail, this is the retail report we've looked at on a bunch. Um, so auto parts stores tend to saturate uh, pretty highly because they uh, can group together and they're, they are competitive on pricing. And they're not only selling to consumers, they're selling to auto repair shops in the market. But auto parts does have its own line item here and this is the demand two million dollars a year in the five minute drive time and this is the supply with eight locations so yes i would agree with you seeing a lot of locations in the area uh, that with eight stores in a five minute drive time it's oversupplied by three million and that's eight stores servicing that demand but if you go to the auto parts for the five minute or excuse me 10 minute drive time Right here, there's 12 stores and there's $1 million of excess demand. So those 12 stores are not meeting the demand in the 10 minute drive time. And then if you go down here to the 15 minute drive time, there's actually 35 auto parts stores servicing the area. And there's 4.6 million of demand not being serviced, even with those 35 stores. So the auto parts segment in the 10 and 15 minute drive time is undersupplied. Even though there's a lot of stores, they're not servicing all this demand. There's $28 million of demand. There's only $23 million of supply. And here's that gap that O'Reilly is going to fill. Uh, and then what I go back to also on this report is these top numbers here. So if for some reason O'Reilly did not renew their lease and or for some reason O'Reilly failed, uh, for example, O'Reilly, if you go back here, this is S&P, Standard & Poor's Global Ratings. It looks at their credit rating as triple B, which is investment grade. That's highly unlikely to have a default at the corporate level. 
and their credit watch is stable. So I don't think anything's going to happen to O'Reilly as a corporation, but if for some reason it did and or they did not renew their lease, there would have to be a lot of retail built out in this area to fill this gap. So even if auto parts got built out and O'Reilly did not do well or whatnot, there's tons of other segments that could go into a building like that. You have health and personal store, personal care stores, clothing, jewelry, um, you know, furniture, building materials is oversupplied, but food and beverage, all these green numbers, books, periodicals, forest, um, you know, food service, liquor. I mean, there's all sorts of different ones. And here's the total gap right here, 218 million. It would take forever for them to, to build out this area. It would, you know, take 30, 40 years to build enough retail, uh, especially as the, the population is, keeps growing to, to meet this demand. So, so you're building, my feeling is when a report looks like this, uh, with all these green numbers, there's going to be demand for other retailers that you could backfill this space if needed. Uh, so hopefully that gives you an idea of my thinking, but at the end of the, the day on this deal, um, O'Reilly, I think is going to do fine at this location because of this retail gap number. And if for some reason you had to backfill it, there's tons of other options uh, with, with other retailers who would go into that space. Um, let me know. Just my two cents. Thanks.